on the media, you know, a lot of people were bitching. How does Stephen Bonner get into the get into the Hall of Fame? And blah 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 blah. Let me tell you what. As far as this this company goes, for sure. But as far as this sport goes, this was the most important fight in the history of this company. At the time when this fight happened, okay, you know where we were back then. You know where we were and what was happening uh, with the sport. We were 44 million dollars in the hole into this business. And we had already done a deal on Fox. Remember, anybody who remembers, we did the fight on the best damn sports show, period. We pulled the highest ratings in the history of that show. And when I say the highest ratings, I mean by a long shot. We killed it. They still didn't do a deal with the UFC. Right? So we went out, we shot the Ultimate Fighter around to every network on Earth. Nobody wanted the Ultimate Fighter. Nobody. So, the last guys we talked to was Spike TV. They didn't want it either. We said, how about if we pay for it? They liked that idea a lot better. First season cost us $10 million. The minute that thing aired, it started pulling the highest numbers they'd ever had in the history of the network. By the time the Chris Lieben, Bobby Southworth, Josh Koscheck thing happened, we were like 2.3 million viewers, which is crazy, crazy numbers. Crazy numbers for a network like Spike that had just started. And we still didn't have a deal. So we get down to the finale, Diego Sanchez and Kenny Florian fight. Diego annihilates him in a minute. And I'm like, this is, this is so bad, man, this is not good. Then, Stephen Bonner, Forrest Griffin come out. This thing, this fight was so small, it was at the Cox Pavilion. The Cox Pavilion in Las Vegas, right? During six minutes of that fight, 12 million people tuned in for six minutes of that fight. You know how crazy that is? You know what insane numbers those are? And if anybody, who was there that night? Was anybody actually in the arena? People were stomping their feet in the place. It sounded like a fucking train was going through that place. There has never been a more important fight in the history of the UFC. There has never been a more important fight except for like UFC 1 in the history of mixed martial arts. And it is our honor to induct Forrest Griffin and Stephen Bonner into the UFC Hall of Fame. Yeah. Now, well, ladies and gentlemen, Forrest Griffin and Stephen Bonner. It is my honor to induct you into the UFC Hall of Fame. Congratulations, boys. And it's the biggest thing I've ever been a part of, and I really appreciate all of you being a part of it with me. Thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, I first saw the UFC my junior year of high school in 1994, and, you know, the minute I saw it, um, it just hit me that this is the coolest thing ever, ever. Finally, all those questions, he used to have arguments with my friends, who would win the fight, Reggie White or Mike Tyson? Well, Reggie White would just mow him like a bear and take him down, and well, Tyson would knock him on. And finally, all those questions got to be answered. And um, I remember going to wrestling practice after I saw the VHS tape of UFC 2 and trying to armbar people and getting yelled at by the coach. And, and um, man, uh, my one friend had a cheater box, Boilex, so we'd go in his dad's basements and, you know, watch the UFCs. And it was the thing I looked forward to the most. And then fast forward a couple years, it's 1997, I'm in college at Purdue, and Randy Couture is fighting Vitor Balfour. And uh, to me, that was uh, uh, the moment when the sport really evolved. Like, finally, like, uh, world-class athletes are, are, are doing this sport. World-class wrestlers like Randy Couture and Vitor Balfour, this guy who knew all the crazy submissions that Hoist Gracie did. But he's strong and powerful and knocks people out with his hands. and. And I remember having a party at Purdue for, for uh, that pay-per-view. And, um, and Randy upset Vitor. I was just in awe. And uh, I was looking forward to getting out of college. Because over the summers, I started training at the Carlson Gracie Jiu-Jitsu School. And um, after college, you know, I kept training Jiu-Jitsu. And really, um, never thought ever that I'd be a part of the UFC. And fast forward a couple more years, I. Uh, had some matches and got lucky enough to got chosen for the Ultimate Fighter reality show. Um, and, and 
You know, I know these guys here had their doubts about the show and the UFC at the time, but something inside me, I knew that the show would be a hit, and um, I just knew, I just knew that the fight with Flores would be a great one. Um, I know my whole life, I had never been the best athlete. Um, I was always average in everything. I had two older brothers who. Uh, who beat my ass a lot and, and they were better than me at everything. So a big part of me was was wanting to become a big bad ninja so I could kick their ass. And that motivated me a lot. And, and that was the beauty of MMA. Um, you didn't have to be great at everything. You could be pretty good at everything and be a good MMA fighter. So if I had decent wrestling and decent jiu-jitsu and decent boxing and a lot of heart, then hey, I could, I could pull this MMA thing off. So got chosen for the, the Ultimate Fighter reality show. That was 2004, and pretty much ever since then, my life has really been all UFC. Um, uh, I mean, not just fighting, just everything I've done outside of fighting. All the, the uh, TV work I've had an opportunity to do with Spike TV and uh, the pre and post shows with, with Fox and ESPN and calling the WEC fights. Uh, really, I couldn't tell you who was one for president, but I could tell you about every guy who was fighting on the undercard. So this last year has been really tough for me. It's kind of been... Uh, he, you know, it's been retirement, it's been putting the sport behind me, been uh, trying to, to unveil my new chapter of the life. And as I sat down and peeled, peeled all these versions of myself away, the one thing that I had in common with the, the businessman Stefan Bonner, one was I was making UFC merchandise and event t-shirts and the Punch Buddies line of clothing. And uh, the you know TV personality stuff in Bonner is all UFC pre and post shows and calling the fights and the aftermath show for the Ultimate Fighter and just every version of stuff in Bonner was was UFC. So um, I just want to thank these guys for letting me be a part of this organization uh, because really ever since um, I saw the UFC for the first time, I fell in love with it and I thought it was the coolest thing on earth. So. So um, since 2004, really, it's my life's been all UFC, and uh, and I'm so thankful to have the opportunity to, to be a part of it, not just fighting in the cage, but uh, in, in all aspects of the organization. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm nothing more than a fan like you guys, you know? I, I love this sport more than anything, and love the UFC more than anything, and uh, it's been really hard, like letting that part of me go and, and you know, moving on and finding the next chapter of my life. So, man, I just got a couple people to thank. <laughs> really, and uh, and Muay Thai, they're they're always big about thanking your teachers. So. Growing up, man, I wanted to thank my uh, my brothers for you know kicking my ass and making me tough. Yeah, you know, my parents, my mom always driving me to Taekwondo. My dad, I was always trying to prove my worthiness to him. Um, my Taekwondo teacher, Dexter Grove, my high school wrestling coach, Kent Lewis, Carlson Gracie, God bless his soul. My first boxing coach, Coach Joe Kane. Uh, Duke Rufus, Mark De La Grande, last couple of years, Sergio Pena, Nick Blomgren, uh, my wife Andrea, my best friend Tom Stoy, and my eight month so son Griffin Bonner right there in the front row. And finally, if, if there's anyone, anyone in the UFC I, I could have picked out to lose that fight to, it would have been Forrest Griffin. I, you know, as, as painful as it was to lose that fight, I was so happy for him because he's a great guy and um, love you, man. Oh, thank you. So, I just want to end with a quote. Um, this one from Calvin Coolidge, Calvin Coolidge. And, and I just found it last night, but I'm like, wow, this is perfect. This really describes me. He said something that goes like this. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. 
Education will not. The world is full with educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent. That means all powerful. I had to look that up. The slogan, press on, has solved and will always solve the problems of the human race. So thank you, UFC, Dana, Lorenzo, Frank Fertitta, for standing by me. And I'll be forever loyal to this organization. Thank you fans, all the support, just the opportunity to entertain you guys. And look out for my charity Garrett's fight. G Money's here, he's a fighter with Down Syndrome, I'm supporting. And uh, the movie Jacked, coming out soon. Woo! Supposed to have a role in that, so watch me get my ass kicked in the movie. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.